All right, some of you may know that S3 has a feature which let us create pre-signed URLs for private content. And um, the entities which has access to these pre-signed URLs are going to be able to see that private content. But when we connect S3 with CloudFront, we'll lose that functionality because CloudFront will be this with this layer that is that all the clients are going to access to. Luckily for us, CloudFront has it, its own system of pre-signed URLs, which works by having a trusted signer, which is basically anyone with access to the private key. We will see that later. And this signs the URL, uh, usually with an expiration time, and then the client is going to be able to see the private content that is inside CloudFront and we can still remain uh, with some public content. Uh, a common use case is that we do the separation by the path of the, of the CloudFront uh, and we will see these too. So let's see what I have, what I already have. I have a simple distribution, no special configuration it only has a S3 origin. We will see this bucket now. And we see that this bucket only has some public images. I have a private folder with some private images that we will, we will restrict the access to these private images at the end of this video. And now I see that behaviors, I have two separate behaviors. One that is the default, which was created for me and the private one that I created. So if I test this CloudFront distribution, if I copy the link and then paste the link, I have no index configured, so I will see this screen. And then if I try to access any of the files, let's access a public file, you'll see that I have access. And if I test the other and a private image, like this, you will see that I have access to. Now, I want to restrict this, everything that is beyond private. I want to restrict this behavior rule. So how am, how am I going to do that? I will do it by using pre-signed URLs. So let's begin. I will edit this rule and here, I will look for this option, restrict viewer access. But before that, okay, let's click yes. No, let's click yes. We will see that it is asking us to add a key group. I have none. That means I have to create one. Let's create one. So I'm here in CloudFront in the public key section. I need to add a public key, but CloudFront won't create that public key, so I need to create it myself. That means I'm the owner of this key. So let's create this key. I will recommend you to use this command, OpenSSL, to create your keys. So we just have to copy and paste it here. This is the name of the key I will create. Let's click Enter. So the key was generated. Now, if, if I do an LL command, I'll see that I have my file created. By the way, um, these commands are going to work on most Linux distributions and, and on Mac OS. So I created my key. Now, this key, if I cut it, this key contains both the private part and the public part and I just need to paste the, the public part in CloudFront. So I need to take out the public part from that key. So with this second command, we will take that public part. Let's paste it. And if I do an LL command, we will see that I have, I have created the public part from the key. So let's get that public part. All right, now that we have this content, we are able to copy. 
now we will paste it here let's remove that final new line and now let's just name it I will name it CloudFront public key and for the description I will put the same so I just created a key but I cannot add the key directly to CloudFront or to this behavior I need to create a key group so let's create a key group that will include this public key so let's go to key groups create key group let's name it I will I will name it CloudFront key group and here I will choose my public key and as you can see if I had many public keys I can add them as well let's create it now that we have created it let's refresh and you'll see your your key group here so now that I have added it I can go down and save my changes now this distribution right now it is deploying but let's check if I still have access to the private behavior which is the private content of my CloudFront distribution so I'm going to do an empty cache okay now it is deployed and we can see that if I try to access my image missing keeper ID that means that this content cannot be accessed uh, with just the URL we need to sign it we need to add some headers or, or query parameters that that will give us access to, to to this content and we need to add that to this URL and another thing is that I modified the behavior just added this wildcard so I, I can so I can restrict all objects that are inside private right I have two images that are private alright so I will create a lambda for, for this I will create my my pre-signed URL using a, a lambda function so I will just create this lambda cloud front pre -sign URL I will choose Python as I have already a code created a zip created to in Python I will choose a role now this role uh, it needs to have CloudFront access CloudFront permissions to create the pre URL otherwise you probably won't be able to create it now let's create a function it's just a simple function no no special configuration and now I will upload my zip file which contains the uh, function I'm going to show you let's upload it now that my function is uploaded you will see the following code in Python you will see some extra files and these extra files are the libraries that I am importing and then let's have a quick review of this code I need to to tell where is my pen file remember the pen file that we just created using the commands this these two commands actually just the first one we also need to sell to say the URL of our cloud from distribution we need to set the expiry time in this case I just put random values of the next year and we need to say the key ID where is this key ID well it's not the key group ID no is the key ID is this one actually let's copy right now and paste it here oops all right and that's all we needed all the information so we can so we can request a pre-signed URL of CloudFront okay here I'm I need to add the file or the path which I want I want the, the, the object, the file to be accessed 
So I'm going to add this private file that we see that right now I have no access to. And let's run this code. Actually, let's first deploy it. And then create a test case. I don't need any anybody here. It is still deploying. All right, now that is deployed, let's run it. And okay, no such file. That's actually an expected error. We need to add our PAM file here in the Lambda so this function can function. Let's go here, deploy. Um, here, new file, okay. I will name it as I have it already in the code. And now, let's try that again. New file, cloud front test key dot pam. Let's open it, okay. And now I'm going to copy the content of my file, which is this content. Let's just copy it, paste it here. Let's remove that space, save it, deploy it. For production, uh, maybe you we want a way to to hide this file or to encrypt it so it's not human readable and visible so now let's test this you will see that now I get my sign URL if you analyze it we see it has an expire uh, attribute it has a signature and it's a very long URL and at the end we have the key pair ID which we used. Okay, now let's copy this. Copy and let's try it. Now we see that I have my my image. Let's try this one more time. I have a second image, private too. It's also protected. Let's go to the Lambda function. Let's create a present URL for private2. Deploy. And once it is deployed, we're going to click test. All right, let's click test. Let's copy the URL, the pre signed URL. Let's paste it. And I have my second image. And if I go to the non private uh, content of my distribution, I have no problem because this is poly content, it is not restricted. Okay? So that's all I wanted to show you. Thank you.